Hey guys, so today we're gonna go over some slightly more complicated Pythagorean theorem problems. They're not too bad, but you might have to draw some auxiliary lines or do the Pythagorean theorem twice instead of just once to get the final answer. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna apologize in advance. My dogs are behind me and they might bark. They saw something outside. So we'll see what happens. All right, so in this problem, it says we're solving for x to the nearest 10th. Um, I know that I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem because I have a right triangle and I have, well, I need to use two sides that are known in order to be able to do the Pythagorean theorem. So if you look at this first triangle right here that x is a part of, um, I'm gonna go ahead and redraw it over here. So this is what I'll call triangle one for the video. And um, I actually can't solve it with Pythagorean theorem because I only know one of the sides. So in order to do Pythagorean theorem, you need to know two of the three sides. So um, it looks like you wouldn't be able to do the problem except for the fact that they did join this other right triangle. I'll call this triangle two. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw that over here by itself. And that's a two and a four. So in this blue right triangle, I am able to solve for this top side right here. I'm gonna go ahead and call it Y. So we have a variable to call it by. And because that side is actually this same side that is missing right here from the triangle one, once I figure out this value, I can plug it into this triangle and then solve for x. So I'm gonna write the Pythagorean theorem for both of these. Uh, first, I need to figure out where the hypotenuse is. So I always turn the right angle into a little arrow and it points to the hypotenuse. So in triangle one, the hypotenuse was that side that was shared by the two triangles, the side I called y. And in triangle two, the right angle points to the side that was labeled four. So that's the hypotenuse for this triangle. So if I set up the Pythagorean theorem for this one, it would be two squared plus x squared equals y squared. And if I set up the Pythagorean theorem for this triangle, it would be two squared plus y squared equals four squared. And since this one only has one variable, I can solve. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply two times two and four times four, that gives me four and 16. Since I was given the hypotenuse in triangle two, I am gonna have to do some subtraction to move the four to the other side. And I get that y squared is equal to 12. Now. Typically, if we were finishing the problem here and we were really trying to figure out what the length of this side is, I would take the square root of 12 and that would be the value of y. If I were to do that, so if you take the square root of 12, um, I did that before, you get 3.4641. Uh, and the decimal keeps going. And because we are not done with the problem yet, we have not finished the, the problem that they asked us to solve because they asked us to solve for x. There is a rule in mathematics that you are not allowed to round your answer until you get to the very last step. So even though they told us to round x to the nearest tenth, um, you don't want to round y to the nearest tenth because there is a chance that when you round it and plug it back in, to solve for something else in the problem, you lose all those decimals that were behind the, the four, and that would cause you to get a slightly inaccurate answer. It's only gonna be off maybe by a tenth of a, of a decimal or a hundredth. However, and it's not even gonna be all the time, it's probably gonna be, I don't know, maybe 50% of the time. So there is a chance you could round and end up getting the correct answer. But there's also a chance that if you round, you're gonna be off by like a 10th. So what would be much better is if you do not round. So your options are you can either leave the decimal 
I usually go out four or five decimal places. But in this problem, we actually have an even easier way of doing it. Because if you think about it, we need to figure out what y squared is. So if you took the square root of 12 and you have that decimal on your calculator, and then you square it, it's just gonna go back to 12. So y squared actually is 12, so you don't even need to take the time to take the square root of it. If you're gonna be plugging that value in as y squared, you already have it, it's already 12. So I would save yourself the time there, and then the possible inaccuracy if you were to round this, and just finish the problem this way. So two squared is four, So 2 squared is 4 plus x squared equals, and y squared is 12. So you don't need to square 12 or anything like that. The value of the y squared is 12. So you're just going to substitute 12 there for y squared. Then you can move 4 to the other side. You get x squared is equal to 8. And now because we are trying to figure out what just x is, you're going to square root both sides, and you're going to get that x is equal to 2.8284, and some more decimals. And because they asked us to round to the nearest tenth, that would go one number after the decimal. However, you do want to look at this value behind it. If that is a five or higher, you have to add one to the tenths place. Since it's a four or lower, we can just keep it as 2.8. So that will be my final answer that x is equal to 2.8. All right, I've got another one. In this problem, we were asked to solve for x to the nearest tenth. And I can see that there's some right triangles in this problem. We actually have a rectangle, which is when you take two right triangles and you join them at the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse in this problem is six for this right triangle and this right triangle. So I've got one, two, three right triangles. And if you look, the triangle that X is in, we don't have two sides known to us. We only know that the hypotenuse of that right triangle is six, and we know we're trying to solve for X, but we're missing this side right here. So a lot of times in geometry, what you're gonna have to do is identify what they, what you need in order to solve the problem, but that they didn't ask you to solve for. So they never asked you to solve for this horizontal line here, but there's no way you can get the value of X unless you solve for that value. So by doing practice problems and using logic and reasoning skills, hopefully you'll be able to start to discover when you're working on a problem, if there's something you need to solve for before you get your final answer they didn't mention. So I can see if this is a, a rectangle, this side length is going to be the exact same length as this side length. And I can solve for that side length because it's part of this triangle down here. Um, this right triangle, I can see that it's the hypotenuse of triangle three. So um, I'm going to draw that over here. This is triangle three. And if you remember from class, I did talk to you guys about Pythagorean triples. Those are cases where all three numbers of the side lengths of a right triangle are integers and or whole numbers because they're going to be positive. And in this case, this is the classic three, four, five triangle. So you can save yourself some time if you remember me going over that from class. Um, it's the only consecutive number uh, when you have three, four, five. Those are consecutive numbers. They come one right after the other. And they happen to be the two legs and hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I know that this side is going to be five. If you didn't know that, uh, we can go ahead and pretend like we didn't know and we are solving for that. I'm going to call it, uh, let's go with Y again. So let's call that Y. So because that is the hypotenuse, I would just set it up as 3 squared plus 4 squared equals y squared. So it's going to be 9 plus 16 equals y squared. 25 
is y squared. And if you remember from the last problem, because you're gonna do Pythagorean theorem over here, we could actually stop right now because we're gonna end up squaring the value. If you took the square root, it actually won't harm you in this problem because you get a whole number. So when you take the square root of 25, you get five, which is gonna be the value of y. So you could just say, okay, you know, this y value here actually ends up being five. Or if you want, you could write your Pythagorean theorem with triangle one. So triangle one had an x here. We'll call this value y and this value six. I can see the six is my hypotenuse in this triangle one. And if I write the Pythagorean theorem, it would be x squared plus y squared equals six squared. So I already know that y squared is 25. The other option is you could just say, okay, y is five. And then when I square it, I get 25. It ends up with the same result. So x squared plus 25 equals 36. And then I can subtract 25 from both sides. And I get that x squared is equal to 11. Um, unlike the last problem, I did not take the square root of 11 ahead of time. So let's do that right now. And the square root of 11 is 3.3167. Again, they asked us to round to the nearest tenth, so the tenths place is one number after the decimal. We do still wanna look at that number right after the tenths place. If it's a five or higher, we have to add one to our last number of the tenths place. But since it's a four or lower, it's actually a one, we are done. And the value of X is 3.3. .3. All right, and let's look at the last problem. Now this shape is a trapezoid. So a trapezoid is a shape that has two parallel sides, but the other two sides are not parallel. So in this problem, um, a trapezoid is actually composed of a rectangle stuck to a triangle. And that triangle is a right triangle. So sometimes it's two right triangles with a rectangle in the middle. Um, but if you are looking at this problem, it's almost like you could kind of start to see that there's a right triangle somewhere in the picture. Um, you could, I mean, you could draw a diagonal line this way, and that would create a right triangle here, but that won't help you solve the problem. The right triangle that you need to discover by drawing an auxiliary line so an auxiliary line is a line that isn't part of the original problem, but it's a line that you chose to draw because it just helps you solve it. It's something that you add on to the picture. Um, I can draw my auxiliary line. Let's see, I'll use this red line and I'll make it a little thinner. And you can see that my auxiliary line could drop straight across here. And as long as I'm drawing it so that it is parallel to this top line of five, this value of my auxiliary line is five, and it's gonna make a right angle with this part of the line. Now, the way you would still make a mistake here is if when you draw that right triangle, right, we know this top part is five, and we know that this hypotenuse is x. But don't make the mistake of calling this vertical side three. It's not three, because three was the length from the very top of the trapezoid here all the way down. So this value, this whole thing is three. So what you have to do is use the fact that in this rectangle, this side was given to you as one, and you're kind of gonna drag that over here and say that this side was one. And using the segment addition postulate, that leaves two left over for this vertical side of your right triangle. That's how we get three as that total side length. So this is actually two. And now you can just do the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, my hypotenuse is x. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. 
4 plus 25 is x squared plus 29. And then because I am trying to solve this to the very end, I'm going to square root both sides. And again, I did not do this ahead of time. So the square root of sorry, 29, is 5.385164, and some more numbers after that. And they did ask me again to round to the tenths place, so I want to go from the front all the way and cut it off at the tenths place, but you still need to look at that number behind the tenths place if it is a five or higher, which it is this time, we have to add one to our last number that was in the 10th spot. So our final answer is going to be 5.4 units. All right, good luck working on your next level Pythagorean theorem problems and message me on Remind if you have any questions. Have a great day.